Rembrandt's, muttered the electric coiffed boxing promoter Don King as he entered the courtroom. He had just spotted Aggie Wellen Kenny and her fellow artists lined up with their pads and pencils, pens, crayons, oil sticks and watercolors at his 1984 arraignment on federal tax evasion charges. Never mind jurors, who would acquit Mr. King but convict his longtime secretary. Famous or notorious defendants must also trust their fates to courtroom illustrators, their verdicts both suitable for framing and ineligible for appeal. Otherwise, in the absence of cameras, how are we to remember trips to the bar of justice by the likes of the boss of bosses John Gotti, David Berkowitz, the son of Sam, John Lennon's assassin, Mark David Chapman, the preppy killer Robert E. Chambers, the accused drug lord El Chapo, or, for that matter, Donald J. Trump on the witness stand for his New Jersey generals in a 1986 civil suit against the National Football League. Mr. Trump prevailed but won damages of just $3. These and other semi-willing subjects of MS. Kenny and two colleagues, Richard Tomlinson and Elizabeth Williams, are on public display Thursday, November 30, through February.2, 2018 at the Anya and Andrew Shiva Gallery at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, 860 11th Avenue. The exhibit, Rogues Gallery, a 40-year retrospective of courtroom art, displays 78 works, from the Son of Sam trial in 1977 to a last-minute edition by M.S. Williams of the November.1 court appearance of Saifulo Sephof, accused of the terrorist truck rampage that killed 8 and injured 12 on a lower Manhattan bike path on October. 31 M.R. Tomlinson's entire oeuvre, including his coverage of the bungled 1990 Central Park jogger trial, was bequeathed to John Jay after his death in 2010, and over the years the college has added works by M.S. Kenny and M.S. Williams to its criminal justice archive. The New York-centered exhibit, arranged by the associate dean and chief librarian, Larry E. Sullivan, is organized by category murder and mayhem, the mob, celebrity, white-collar, race and terrorism and includes anecdotal synopses of the cases. For instance, after a traffic ticket ended Berkowitz's reign of terror, one police officer said, you can get away with murder in New York as long as you don't park near a fire hydrant. The 1985-1987 Pizza Connection trial of Sicilian mobsters accused of running a billion-dollar heroin pipeline through corner pizzerias became the longest criminal jury trial in federal court and is represented in the exhibit with M.S. Kenny's watercolor and pen sketch of Judge Pierre N. Laval, battling laryngitis, holding up a sign saying overruled. Courtroom artists have been a fixture of public trials since at least 1708, when Luigi Gomier, a French engraver, documented the trial of Paolo Antonio Gauls by the Roman Inquisition. Gauls, accused of stealing sacred vessels, was hanged and dismembered. Later courtroom spectacles in Europe drew such leading artists as William Hogarth and Honor Domier. With the advent of the camera, artists were often deemed superfluous. But the frenzy of photographers at the 1935 New Jersey trial of Bruno Richard Hauptmann in the kidnapping death of Charles Lindbergh's baby led to widespread bans on cameras in the courtroom.